Asia Uncut, brought to you by Electronic Arts and Crown Relocations. Our next guest is one of the up-and-coming comics of London. He is one of the most highly rated comedic acts on the circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the funny Michael Fabry. Yeah. Hello, thank, thank you very much. I was reading an article about China on the internet, which was r interesting and everything, but underneath, people left all these little comments, and like, some of them were, it, like, admittedly, the first person, it was an article about China, and admittedly, the first person had got something wrong. They said, China's a terrible country, they make everybody have a child. And the person underneath that wrote, you feeble-minded retard, it's a maximum of one child, kill yourself. Now, that's a bit much. If you were out somewhere and someone said, is it true in China you have to have a child? You wouldn't say, oh, no, you've got that bit wrong. Kill yourself. <laughs> but, but these comments just get mental. The one underneath that went, China's a terrible country. It's a dictatorship. You can't trust them. Then the next person said, oh, that's a typically xenophobic response to a newly industrialised nation. Gone are the days where China consists of a few people growing rich on tea. <laughs> and then the person underneath that wrote, I love rich tea. <laughs> it's my favourite biscuit. And the next person said, no, you're wrong about China. It's a young and vibrant country now. The young people are taking over. Then the next person said, rich tea's your favourite biscuit. Are you mental? That's the most boring biscuit in the world. <laughs> then the next person said, I think you're forgetting about Tiananmen Square. Then the next person said, I've never tried a Tiananmen Square. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I try to read the answer. I'm trying to make myself a more intelligent uh, person. I'm, I'm not particularly clever. It, it, it's not entirely my fault. My brain was starved of oxygen at birth and that they had to do this emergency caesarean section thing on my mum and they pulled me out with these uh, forcep things. Dented my head, which I'm still a bit pissed off about. There's, there's, a, there's a dent there in the side of my head. They just handed me over like, um, sorry, um, th there's a small dent, but it, it'll still work. Uh, the thing is, there's no corresponding dent on this side. I, I reckon they used a hook. Um, so I was rubbish at everything at school, even sport. N normally idiots are good at sport. I, I can play badminton, but I think anyone can hit a ball if it's attached to a parachute. Um, <laughs> so it's not particularly uh, difficult. They told me I was dyslexic, which, which is a term I've fallen out of love with. They, they used to try and sell it to me at the time at school. So, so Michael, you have a condition called dyslexia, which actually means you're very intelligent. You just can't show it in any way, shape or form. <laughs> and, uh, it's, 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 it's embarrassing. But it's very exciting to be in a... In a, in a different country, I, n I never leave uh, London uh, where I live. I never go anywhere. The only, well, one of the only foreign places I've ever been is Iceland. Uh, I took my girlfriend there for Valentine's Day, and uh, it's uh, it's a romantic place. It's a good place to go for Valentine's Day. Um, and it's, but it's, ex it's expensive. It's so expensive. I ran out of money so quickly, and I put my my card in the machine to get more money out, and it didn't work. And I rang up my bank in a panic, and they said, oh, we don't want to be alarming you, sir, but we think your account's been accessed by international criminals. Someone's been trying to take money out of your account in Iceland. And I, and I went, yeah, I'm in Reykjavik at the moment. And they went, oh, it was you, sorry. We've, uh, we've cancelled your card now. We sent you a new one to Camberwell, which, which is in South London. So, uh, so I had no money for the whole week. I had to borrow money off my girlfriend for the week. I ended up owing her 900 uh, English pounds. So, so obviously I had to uh, dump her. Um, you, you, you can't let opportunities like that slip by, I, I don't think. However much I wanted to see that baby. So, uh, so, uh, yes. Um, I'll leave you on a story. Uh, it's, well, it's the funniest thing to... Basically, this is the start of the story is something went wrong with my <laughs> That's the first thing you need to know. <laughs> this, this lump appeared on it, which was not welcome. And uh, I, I had to take it to the doctors, and I was embarrassed because I'm not shown bits to the doctors before. Also embarrassed because I own some of the most foul underwear known to man. I, I, I didn't want to be the first person to ever get a prescription to Marks and Spencers. Uh, so, so I bought some uh, these nice new... Uh, these nice sort of designer pants that people, the men wear nowadays with the little label sticking out of the top, all sexy. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, morning the doctor's appointment came, uh, I, I, I got up a bit late, I had a quick shower, I, I don't think I dried myself properly. Um, I, I put on um, my new underwear and my jeans and I went up to the doctor's and I walked in a little bit embarrassed going, oh, it's my doctor. And he said, look, I, I can tell you're embarrassed, but you're going to have to show me. Uh, so he sat down in this stool in front of me, and I slipped down uh, my jeans and, and, and my, new, my new pants, and, and, and my entire genitalia was absolutely covered in black fluff. 
and, and there was a moment of silence. So, oh God, sorry, doctor, it's a bit fluffy. And he, he looks up at me and he said, "So, is this the problem?" Was, no, this is a new problem. This wasn't like this when I left us. This is what I did next, which I'll regret for the rest of my life. I went. <sighs> <sighs> and I just blew all this fluff into his face. Um, and, and there was another moment of silence. And I, I promise you, uh, that's, that's new fluff today. I, I, uh, that's, not, that's not accumulated over a period of weeks. Um, but what could I say to him? Because I couldn't say because I bought these new pants for you, Doctor. Um, did you like them? Um, anyway, uh, that's, that's going to be it from me. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, lots of good little experiences there, huh? Yes, yes. I like that. Let me see the dent up close. Yeah, no, it's real. You got it covered here. Yeah, no, it's there. That's it's all right. Just, yeah. Looking good though. Yeah, thank the you. Old, uh, the old fluff in the doctor. Yes, no, that's an absolutely true story. That was, it's so humiliating. Um, I, 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 the thing is, the, it wasn't, when I blew on it, it wasn't so much, <laughs> it all came, a small clump went off and it just hit his, lip just there and just stay there and he didn't notice <laughs> and I should have said to him there's a bit of stuff off <laughs> in your face <laughs> but what I actually said was nothing uh, and just let him see patients uh, for the rest of the day <laughs> with a small well lift a bit of myself left behind on on his face yeah this yes. is good you you clearly have many stories littering your life at a very you're very young by the way I'm what are you, 32 20? I just just look beautiful Dyslexia, really? Is that true? Yeah, that's, no, that's very true. You, you I, grew I up with it? When did you realize you had it? Well, I always realized I was thick. Uh, it's quite <laughs> apparent. Uh, when you, the worst thing is uh, read, reading out loud. I, to, I, to this, I can't read out loud even now. It's, it's, it's embarrassing because you sort of... You, it, uh, we'd read things like Romeo and Juliet at school and the teacher would pick the class thespian to play Juliet and then, and then, the, the, and then it would be me and it would be like Juliet and a Dalek because I could just read very staccato. So the, <laughs> The, the girl playing Juliet would be like, Remy, Remy, we're probably Remy, we're tonight, they're probably Remy, and all that. And I'd be there with going, Shall I hear more or shall I speak at this? <laughs> Romeo, don't find him before that name, but there's no part of you take for myself. Yeah. I take thee at thy word, call me but love. <laughs> it's call me but love, that's it. Um, it's just genuinely awful. <laughs> it's just, it's, you embarrass yourself on a, on a daily basis. I read things and I miss out words the whole time and um, I can't write properly. Even, it's much better than it was. I, was I, I went to a special school. I had to go, I was in my normal school and then we had to get in a minibus. Uh, th a few of us. Uh, <laughs> we were collectively known as the window lickers. Um, oh, nice. uh, but we we used to, and uh, <laughs> the, the setting as well. You have to get you get put in s uh, ability groups. Sets one, two, and three they used to have. Uh, which set one for things like maths, people would be brilliant, and then s they'd have this set three, uh, which is for people who were just rubbish. And it's, I didn't understand why they had to have this designated being thick room so everyone knew because we were going to fail anyway so I don't know why we had to have this <laughs> room and there were very thin walls in between our class and the top set class next door and sometimes through the walls you could hear the teacher of the top set class disciplining his students by threatening them with us you, you could hear him you could hear him through the wall going that's pathetic you should be next door with them <laughs> We just sat again. Who were expecting a guest? Um, they used to they used to, used to send people into our uh, into our class midway through as a punishment. We well, our, where we were educated was a punishment for other, a fear for other people, and you just halfway through the lesson you just get this knock on the door and this bloke would sort of walk in from one set above. Oh, I've been sent down to set three. We we used to like to sort of the best way to make them feel welcome is that they they walk in and we'd be going, well hello come in. <laughs> You, you'll love it here, we're all rubbish from us here. <laughs> look, at, look, look at the blackboard, we've been working on this for 13 weeks. <laughs> Two lemons plus three lemons. Mm. Making friends it's fast. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, where do you go after this? Home. More in Asia, <laughs> but wh where else are you going to perform? I'm going, uh, well, I'm home for a month, then I'm off to uh, Dubai. We're doing a big tour around Dubai. And we also going to do uh, Saudi Arabia. Ah, oh, the hotbed of comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, huh? this would be an interesting. Uh, that would be yeah. unique. Yes, That'll be yeah. good. Well, I hope you enjoyed it out here in Asia. It's great I, I to have it. you on. 
it's been great to be here. Thank you very much. So come back and see us next time you're in town. I insist on it. All right, cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank Michael you very much. Fabry, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. We'll be right back. More Asia and Cut. Coming up next week on Asia Uncut. Shin Han, Solar, Leia Salonga, Veronica Kalandum, Hans Mendler, and Roland Tickinger. Asia Uncut, brought to you by Electronic Arts and Crown Relocations.